Hello and welcome to Voice in the Alexander Technique. I'm Allison Taylor and today we're going to talk about the larynx. So I want to preface this focused exploration with this. I want you to remember that you are a whole three-dimensional being and you are made up of a, a bunch of parts that are interrelated and interconnected and all work together to support your singing, your breathing, your engagement in whatever activity it is that you want to engage in. So when we're talking about parts, we're always talking about a part in the context of a bigger interconnected working whole system. So that disclaimer aside, let's start exploring. So I want to start by asking you a question. What is your voice for? When you think about that question, what comes to you? What is your voice for? Expressing, communicating, What is it for? And why do you have a larynx? What if you didn't have a larynx? What would be possible? What would not be possible? Think about the function of your voice, the value of your voice in the context of your whole life your whole being, your relationships, how you are in the world. So a voice is made up of three main components, a power source, which in our case is the breath, a vibrator, which in the case of the human voice or the vocal folds, which are housed in the larynx, and a resonator. So in our case, the vocal tract, a space for that sound wave to be amplified and resonate so that we can hear it. So I just wanted to frame this exploration in that bigger picture. When we're talking about the larynx, we're talking about it in the context of your voice, why you use your voice, why it's important to you the function of the larynx. And for today, we're just really going to experiment with sound. So we're not going to talk about swallowing or even breathing that much. So let's explore. I want you to use your own hands to just gently palpate or poke around the throat. So maybe you can feel different textures in there. If you come up into the mandible or into the jaw, you'll feel what a bony texture feels like. And if you come back down along the sternocleidomastoid muscle, big long muscle from skull all the way to torso, you feel the texture of a muscle. If you go to the back, really gently pressing, you can feel the spine, the bull vertebra. And then coming back around to the front, you'll feel a sticky outy bit. And that is the, the front of the larynx. And that's cartilage. So the same material that your ears and nose are made of, cartilage. And there is a bone. If you want to find your hyoid bone, you can come from the chin, trace along till it stops. That's where the hyoid bone is, the only bone in the construction of the larynx. So the larynx is movable. Um, in terms of where it's, how it's situated, it is slung or suspended from a series of muscles from the skull and also from the mandible, the jaw muscles. 
suspending, as well as all like series of musculature that comes up through the torso. This is very, very general to support the larynx from underneath. So it is suspended and supported all around in this area of the throat. So it is built for movement, right? It's not ossified or attached to any other bone. It's certainly not attached to the spine, for example, or attached to the clavicle. It's built for movement to be buoyant and suspended. Just like, for example, your elbow. So with your, with your elbow into your side, I just want you to touch your shoulder a couple of times. And I want you to notice that there's constriction and lengthening of muscles to facilitate this movement, right? As you slowly bring your fingertips to touch your shoulder, there's a constriction, but there's also a lengthening, right? And as you bring your hand back down to your side, there's a lengthening, but also a shortening. So there's always antagonistic forces at play in movement. And the same is true in the movement of and within the larynx. And we're not gonna to get too in depth with that today in this video, but I just want you to keep that in mind, that the same constriction and lengthening of muscles that happens when you say move your arm, the joint of movement being your elbow, that same interplay is happening elsewhere in your body, including within and around the larynx. So remember, your whole coordination impacts the freedom and availability of the larynx. So we're gonna explore a little bit now to explore that freedom and availability and the impact of different parts on the larynx. So we're not gonna go below your waist for a moment. We're kind of going to stay up here, but I just want you to keep in mind that you're, even if you're gripping in your feet, that can have a chain reaction and an effect on the larynx. And maybe we'll explore that in another video. So bring your hand gently again to your throat, just to the front of the, just to the larynx here, the thyroid cartilage, which is the front of the larynx. And swallow. Maybe you can feel the larynx move as you swallow. Your head spine impacts the freedom and availability of the larynx. So keeping your hand here gently, you can take breaks if you want and switch hands. I just want you to, I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see me. I want you to kind of scrunch a little bit or even a really slight collapse in your in your spine, particularly in your head, neck, spine. It's kind of like a Charlie Brown, like mm, kind of slump. Mm. And just feel what happens to the larynx under your hand. And then just gently unscrunch, just coming out of that collapse back into your huh, buoyant stature and come in and out of that scrunch a couple times. You may even hear how it impacts my voice, right? So. We're already seeing, hearing the impact. I just want you to feel it under your hands. And then unscrunch. Just see what you notice as you put that slight squish of the head on top of the spine. Notice that there's an effect on the larynx. So your head spine affects your larynx. And next we're going to play around with the jaw. So the jaw attaches here, just roughly in front of your ears. And the mandible, the jaw bone comes down and around. Just trace your jaw a little bit there. You can trace along the outside. And then bring your hand back gently to feel the larynx. And I want you to just open and close your jaw like you're chewing gum or chewing food. The hyoid bone is quite close to the jaw, and as I said, it's 
Um, there are muscles that come down from the mandible to the hyoid bone. And then I want you to over open your jaw like you're doing a big yawn. In fact, you could do a big yawn. I feel what happens to your larynx. You may feel that there's a movement of the larynx out of the way to make space for the jaw to open. And then what if you clench your jaw? Clench. And release. Clench. And release. If you have any recurrent jaw issues or a TMJ, you can skip this clenching part and just modify. Next, we'll explore the tongue. So you can use your thumbs to just kind of palpate the root of the tongue here. The tongue is a huge and strong muscle coming up from the larynx and resting on the floor of your mouth. So if you just gently bring your, your hand back to the larynx again, press the tongue into your roof of your mouth and release and press and release. Notice if there's any impact on the larynx. You may feel some movement. When there's constriction of the tongue, it will pull or impact the larynx. Next, you're going to clean around your teeth with your tongue one way. And the other way. And as you're moving your tongue around the outside of your teeth, just notice is the larynx moving? There may be movement there. And lastly, um, I know in yoga they call this a lion's breath, I think, um, but just a big kind of stretched out tongue that involves tongue and jaw, right? So noticing how it affects your larynx, if it does. Swallow again. Great. And then breath. The type of breath we take can impact the larynx. So I just want you to breathe normally for a moment. Just so you get a baseline, just noticing if there's any movement there. And now imagine someone has just surprised you with a cupcake and you have a gasp of surprise. With your hand gently on the larynx, what do you notice? Now you may even notice in the video or in yourself that when I'm taking that breath, it's impacting my whole torso, right? And probably like neck, shoulders, I feel a constriction here. So we're talking about the larynx and the effects on the larynx, but there's gonna be a whole system change as well with this breath. So like a stressed out breath versus a calm, relaxed breath. Like you've just arrived to the beach or to the, to the park where you're going to take a walk. And noticing what happens in the larynx. And lastly, this breath, just releasing your air on an SH sound. And turning that into a hum. Mm -hmm. Now we're adding vibration. vibration under your hand or you may not and that is perfectly fine. Taking it into regular speech. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you doing today? Hmm, that's nice. Again, noticing any movement under your hand. Not with judgment or shoulds, just simply noticing. We're getting, building your awareness of this area. And lastly, imagine that you see someone you know across the street. Hey, 
Hi. I don't know why I'm waving. Hello. Hi. So with more athletic voice use, is there any change? Notice how your larynx responds to these different types of breath and sound behaviors. And give your hands a break. And we're just gonna draw a big circle with your hands and come down through the center. Just as your larynx is interconnected within itself into the rest of you, your whole self is interconnected in your space. So as you're drawing a circle around yourself, just take in your room. Ooh, feel your feet on the floor. Have an intention of buoyancy, springiness, sprungness. Ooh, one last big circle and coming down through the center. Ha 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 ha, just wiping down the sternum, wiping down the muscles of your back. We've had some intense inner focus and just want to return to a balanced inner and outer focus. So that's our exploration of the larynx for today. Let me know how that was for you. And if you're gonna sing or use your voice now, just notice, what does your voice feel like after this exploration? Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.